thanks for joining me once again on Delight Channel. Always a pleasure to have you here. T Mac is my name, and um, all I'm passionate about is to see how every week I can share something with you that I hope will help you all in your journey. All right, so we are getting toward the end of a series we started a couple of weeks ago titled Leading in the Workplace. We've touched on What's a group? What's a team? How do you create a team? What are the stages in team development? What are the roles of the leader in each of the stages? We have spoken about um, tough love in the workplace. How do you maintain discipline? Performance management system, which was the content for last week. And this week, we want to speak about something else that is also within the team development phase, which is called delegation yes delegation now <laughs> you will find out that this is usually one of the booby traps one of the banana peels for most leaders and that is why i invite you to please pay attention let's walk through this together shouldn't be as long as the usual videos i hope so that uh, we can share perspective on delegation so what is delegation delegation is when somebody with an authority grants that authority to somebody else to exercise or when an assignment or a, or a duty or a responsibility is given to somebody else on behalf of the person that has a primary ownership all right so when we speak about delegation you need to understand that there are various elements that go with delegation you know i'm always talking about elements <laughs> that is how i know how to teach um, there are three three elements that you need to be aware of when it comes to delegation. One is that there is a responsibility that you are delegating. There is the authority that must go without responsibility. And there is the accountability for the responsibility. Let me break it down. Delegation says that there is something that you are to do that you have been given to do as the leader. If you are delegating, it means you find somebody in your team and you give that person that responsibility, that duty that your own boss or the organization or even the society requires of you to do, you give it to that person to do. That is element number one. But one thing you must remember immediately is that if you give responsibility without giving authority, you have created an imbalance. Meaning, when you are delegating, responsibility and authority to execute it must match. You cannot give somebody the responsibility for ensuring that all the vehicles are filled, all the drivers are ready, but that person does have that person doesn't have any control over the drivers that person cannot approve funds for getting fuel you are only creating chaos so when you are delegating you must be conscious to ensure that the responsibility and the matching authority is given to the person the individual the group the team that is to execute it that there is a match Otherwise, that imbalance will create more problem than what you are trying to solve. Number three is that even though you are delegating the responsibility, the accountability stays with you. And that is why there is a big difference between delegation and abdication. Abdication is when you just abandon it. So, even though you are delegating, Remember that the accountability for the performance or non-performance of that duty rests with you. Therefore, whatever you do, don't ever, ever forget that accountability for that role rests solely with you. And that then leads to the second, to the next point, which is why should you think of delegation it's obvious i will come to why people struggle with it when you delegate you extend yourself when you delegate you are growing future leaders 
when you delegate, you are becoming immortal because as you share off your duties, as you share off your responsibilities, and I will show you why that is very critical because there is a process to delegation. You get to build solid relationship. You get to invest in your team in a manner that they will never ever forget. So delegation extends you, extend the organization, spreads the skill, builds capacity, prepares the organization for succession, and ensures that at no point in time does the organization or even your team suffer what you call the key man risk. So, why is there a reluctance by managers to delegate, by leaders to delegate? The top on the list is the, the, the hunger for control. Most managers think that the less their subordinates or their team members know, the more powerful they are, the more indispensable they are, and so they hold on to it. Another reason why managers or leaders hesitate to delegate is because they are perfectionists and they are always afraid this person will not do it well, this person will drop the ball, this person will, will mess me up. Another reason why they are also afraid to delegate is because they probably are underestimating the capacity of their team to do anything. But what is this video trying to tell you today? If you do not promote yourself out of your current job, you are likely going to get stuck there for a long time. If you are, and this time, this is very deep for me. If you remember and you've been here from the beginning of this channel, the very first thing we spoke about is purpose. Having a purpose for life and developing a plan. If you are a leader with a purpose and you are a leader with a plan, nobody will beg you to delegate. The reason being that you will know that you are on a journey. When you find leaders who are refusing, who are reluctant, who are hesitant to delegate, they are not going anywhere. And unfortunately, whether they like it or not, at some point they have to move. But if you have found your purpose and you have a plan that you are chasing, you will be the one to delegate yourself out of your current role. And because you are adding value, other things being equal, your organization will have the pressure to find a higher role to give you simply because you have not only you will not only have proven your worth on your current role, you would have shown that if you leave that role, the organization will not crash. So, what I'm saying is that get educated, get enlightened, let this video demystify your mind and start learning how to delegate. I run to the next bus stop. So, who do you delegate to? Do not just delegate recklessly. Remember, you cannot abdicate. And remember that even though you have assigned that responsibility, the accountability resides with you. Therefore, you must find somebody who is interested in that role, somebody who is excited in that role, somebody whose journey ties into the duty that you are about to delegate, that finds that job sufficiently motivating and can be committed to it. And if it's a job that nobody wants to do, if you go back to our last week episode on performance management system, design that delegation in a manner that the requirements are clear, the targets are clear, the, the measurement systems are clear, the tracking system is operational, and be ready to follow through on whatever the consequence that you have promised. But if you can find somebody who is motivated for that role, the better for you. Now, this part is the core of this week's video, which is really when every detail is checked, when all these boxes I've said are checked, you know what delegation is, you are committed to delegating, you have overcome the fear of not delegating, and you have identified somebody to delegate to, then how do you do it? The process of properly delegating 
is what I call the IDD. IDD. Identify, develop, and then delegate. I repeat. Identify, develop, and then delegate. So, the finding the person is what I spoke about shortly, which is the identify. Find the person. Dimension the person. Let the person know that you are planning to delegate this role. Get their buy-in. Get their understanding of what the role is about. Clear all ambiguities and let them be mentally, emotionally, physically. If they need a tool to do it, they need a system to do it, they need a title to do it, they need a label to do it. Put all the conditions and the, and the circumstances in place for them to be able to do it. That is the identify. Now, the develop is the work. Don't just drop it on their lap. If you don't ever, if you don't remember anything else, remember that when you delegate, you are still accountable. So let the process of delegation be a gradual handshake. Introduce that individual into what you are trying to delegate them into, bit by bit by bit by bit. That is the development part. They need a training, send them there. So it's a, it's a gradual process where you do it before them, then you slowly give them to do, and the more they gain mastery, the more they gain confidence, the more you step back, and you step back, and you step back, until it gets to the point where you can completely let go and because you also now know the system, the development part of it must include your check gates, your toll gates. There must be certain control points that you will identify in that responsibility that you don't need to be there all through, but if this box is checked and this box is checked and that box is checked, then you have confidence that everything will go well. If you can even counter check, meaning whatever you are delegating to A, you design it such that B counter checks, and whatever you are delegating to B, you design it such that A counter checks. Again, if you need help in this man in, in, in this issue, let us know. We are happy to provide you with whatever support you require. But the point I don't want you to ever forget is delegation requires development. One of my mentors tell me that if you don't train them, don't blame them. So you must develop them before you then go to the next phase, which is now delegating. Once you have gone through the slow and gradual handshake with the individual or the team involved, and you've done it before them, you've slowly given them space to do a little, then a little more, then a little more until they are able to occupy the entire space, then let go. And you need to hear this. Let go. Do not micromanage them. Because if you say you want to delegate, the value of delegation comes when you give them the latitude and the space to exercise their individuality, their creativity, their ability to do it. You may get the shock of your life. They may do it better than you. As a matter of fact, if they are not doing it better than you, then something is wrong in the team you have set up or the way you are delegating to them. Meaning that your, your, your primary concern must be that your quality criteria are met, either in terms of the quality of the output, the timing of the output, the, the presentation of the output or whatever it is and give them more freedom around the non-essential parts as long as your gates are properly manned and your checkpoints are tying up for you. Let go. Many leaders frustrate their subordinates and their team members because they truly never delegate. They are always in the shadow, micromanaging, and that is because usually they have not known the IDD steps. So having shared this with you now, I invite you to please go, practice the IDD, and once you are sure that the development has happened, then let go. And then see them shock you 
see them do it better, see them do it faster, and, let, and see them get committed to you because they will truly see you as a leader and as a mentor, as somebody who is helping them on in their journey. And what you'll find is that if you don't do this well, you will frustrate yourself, you will frustrate your team, you will frustrate the organization. But if you do it well, I've said that before, the benefits are numerous and everybody benefits and it helps you, even you on in your journey to the next step. So please share as widely as you can. You may know somebody who needs to hear this, kindly send it to them. And like I said, subscribe to the channel so you know when new videos are released. And there is a, there is a Telegram channel. I invite you, there is a video in this channel that tells you how to subscribe to that Telegram group. Join the group so that the weekly debriefing and extra content we share, you can also see it and benefit from it. Thanks for being here once again this week. As usual, TMAC is still my name. It hasn't changed. And all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. See you next week. Bye.